Peanut! Today we'll have a look at a pen by this brand, Hua Hong. And uh, this pen was sent to me by Marcus. Thank you Marcus for sending me this, I appreciate it. Interesting pen, I have reviewed only one other Hua Hong uh, pen at this point. Let's have a look at this. I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Top of the pen, finial, reflective, and um, you know, a little grubby. A bit of bit of pitting on the chrome. I'll come back to that in a second. Original clip, I like that. I don't think I've ever seen that clip before. Not too tight. Works well. We have a center band with some nondescript scroll work on it. It's uh, it's interesting. And then we have this barrel out of one piece. And you know what that means? Eyedropper in time. Anyway. Um, come back to that too in a second. Uh, here we have the nib, number 5 nib. Uh, looks decent, says Iridium Point Germany. Has a bit of scroll work on it. Definitely not the world's worst nib. And we have the section, slightly hourglass shaped with a little bit of threading there. Uh, and then a step down from the barrel, which Oh, believe it or not, it's actually not sharp, which is not that common. And a lot of Chinese pens I've used, it's, it's very sharp. But this is really nicely rounded off. Takes cartridges and or, well, yeah, and or I guess a converter. Uh, and of course this is metal. So eyedroppering, there's a bit of a risk of, of um, uh, rust, but it's possible. I guess, because the barrel is just, it's, it's the same material. It's a slab of the same material. Pen is not the world's biggest, it's fairly skinny, uh, but that's okay. And it posts, and it posts fairly deeply, so you get a nice, decently sized pen, I would say that way. For some reason, what I really liked was how they uh, put together uh, the um, uh, threads there, because this really fits together seamlessly. Well done. That looks really cool. Okay, writing experience was, well, it's a slightly inexpensive Chinese pen. The nib is on the rigid side, I found. Uh, it is definitely not the world's smoothest writing experience, but it's by no means bad. Uh, I, I, it wasn't scratchy, it wasn't a terrible nib, so in that regard I think they, they have definitely done a nice job here. Okay, what do I like about it, what do I not like about it? Nice material, nice dark green, uh, nice pattern in it. I do like that you could, I guess, I haven't tried it, but you could convert to an eyedropper. I know that a lot of people go completely berserk over that, so that, that you know, might, might float your boat. Um, and it's, it's, it's alright, the proportions are alright. I think it looks good enough for what it is. Things I don't like so much. Now, here's one. The first thing, I'm going to close the curtains, because... The sunlight is very intense, and I think it's messing up the video a bit. There we go. Um, things I don't like so much. Well, here's one thing that I wanted to point out. People ask me one question a lot, and I need to have a drink for that. And the question is, does it really matter whether or not you buy an expensive pen? So is there an added advantage to buying an expensive pen versus an inexpensive pen? Well. You could fill a whole video to answer that question, but here's what I'm going to say. If you buy a more inexpensive pen, you may notice specific things that you might not notice so quickly on an, in on an expensive pen, which doesn't mean that on an expensive pen it does not happen. But here you have one example. You see that center band? It rotates. All right. Is that a big deal? Not necessarily, because you can put that pattern right where you want it. Okay, that's one thing. Second thing, you have this pitting on the top, and the section, yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's, no, probably not, I don't think the camera's going to pick that up, but there is some pitting there from where it was held, where it was used, all right? On more expensive pens, um, I haven't had that happen that much. Yes, I also had experienced uh, more expensive pens where parts are a bit loose. Yes, I have heard of expensive pens that get pitting in chrome uh, covered sections, but I think it is less common. All right, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying it's less common. So I think that's the difference between more expensive and more inexpensive pens. 
Having said all of that, guys, this is what it is. It's an inexpensive pen and it's a decent finish. It looks nice. It feels all right. That's what you get. It's a knockabout pen. You take this to work, you lose it. it doesn't matter. You buy another one. You take this to work, you lose it, you cry. So that's the difference. All right. Marcus, thanks a lot for sending me this pen. Um, I am going to do a writing sample next. There will be measurements as well as high resolution pictures of the pen and writing sample on my website, sbrebrown.com. Hope this was useful so far. I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with this Hua Hong pen. Um, interestingly enough, I took the converter out of another Hua Hong pen, namely this pen, and it doesn't really fit. So there's a gap there, but you know, just to save some ink and not be terrible about all kinds of things, I'm just going to use it. Hua Hong. Uh, this is the green marble because I don't know a model number, I'm sorry. Uh, green marble and um, well, this nib is, I would say, fine. That's definitely not a medium. As you can see, the nib skips. And I think that's mainly because it's dry. I don't think it's a horrible nib, but you can see skip there, skip there, skip there. It seems to be on the down strokes. Of course, now it doesn't skip. Yeah, there we go. I think this nib could benefit from a little bit of a tuning to make it a little bit wetter, and then it would probably stop doing that. So it's not horrible, it's not something you can't fix yourself, but it could be tuned a bit better. And there you go. Wetness. Well, if it skips this much, it's probably not going to be world's wettest pen and indeed it's super dry so I think that's you know therein lies the problem squeeze out some line variation but there too you really need to I wanted to write hello and then I wrote hung which I guess is a contraction of hua and hong sorry I just it's automatic writing um, but fun all the same maybe some reverse writing ultra dry so dry that it just the pen just stops writing but oddly enough not scratchy it's really smooth um, and that goes for the whole pen the writing experience is smooth enough so this is a nib uh, this would be a good pen to buy if you want to practice nib tuning see if you can make it a bit wetter having said that I think it's a it's a fun pen it's a, a nice color uh, special thanks of go of course goes to uh, Marcus uh, who sent me the pen to review I appreciate it guys I hope this was useful and uh, I'll gladly see you later